developing anything because uh, release 504 is taking so long to get out. So this should give you um, a bit of an update as to where we stand and what's coming next and what's coming after that and what's coming after that. So if we can go to the next slide, which is the first slide, um, how we view software releases. So just in case anyone's wondering, um, this should give you some ideas as to what we don't do with our software releases. Um, it's important to us that we produce a finished product when it's released for general availability. So we don't put out software that we consider to still be in testing. Sometimes this means that the release takes longer than we would like it to take, but from our perspective, it's more important to put out a finished product than get something out quickly. We don't rush through a release cycle. Uh, there's nothing, we don't have anything like Mozilla's rapid release cycle where the goal is to just crank up version numbers. Our goal is to provide the, the best updates to the software that we have and to realistically number those updates as to whether it's a minor update or a major update. Next slide, please. What we do do is test our software very carefully uh, for regressions. Um, we try to make sure that everything we want to get into a release gets into that release. Things that are important, particularly during the 5.0 release cycle, things that are important to uh, get the operating system installed. Um, it's, you can't enjoy the operating system if you can't get it onto the hardware. So a lot of our focus has been on what we need to do in order to get the operating system to install. And if we have an update that will potentially get more users running up and running, then we will hold off that update until it's ready to go so that we can get those other users using the operating system. This same concept holds true for the other things that we do, such as uh, the package manager. There are lots of new features coming in the package manager, but until they're actually ready, they're not going anywhere. We're still testing. Um, remember, we have a very small group of testers, which, which means that testing may take longer than for companies that have a thousand people testing at once. Next slide, please. Just to give you an idea when I'm talking about releases, major releases are 4567.0. No, it's the next slide after that. I'm watching the I'm I'm watching in the corner of my screen the uh, the the live feed. Release terminology, the fourth slide. Oh, it is up? Okay. Um, a significant point release is 5.1, 5.2. We haven't gotten beyond the significant point release of 5.0. Bug fix and maintenance releases are the next digit. So we've gone from 5.0 in May of 2017 through 5.3 and 5.0.3 and we're coming up on 5.0.4. Next slide, please. So we hadn't really anticipated a 5.0.5 release. The original plan was to go from 5.0.4 to 5.1. But while we've been working on 5.0.4, we've been accumulating things 
for the 5.1 release, things that were too involved to fit in the 5.0.4 release, things that were truly enhancements, so they would go into a new version. And when we took a look at the length of the list, it just seemed that 5.1 was going to take a long time to get out. Uh, you may recall from previous roadmap updates, I've said that national language versions were going to debut in 5.1. That's a lot of work all by itself. Forget all the other things that we want to do. Languages are going to take a while. We have a couple languages that are much farther along than most of the other ones. So we decided that it may actually work out where we have a number of fixes and minor enhancements ready to go along the way to getting 5.1 out. And it didn't make sense not to do a 5.0.5 release. We'll see. We're still not completely set on it, but 5.1 will be the next significant point release. And then we'll have a normal release cycle after that until we get to 5.2. 5.2 plans are not even on the board yet. So we're not sure what we're planning for 5.1 that will get deferred to 5.2 or what new things we will put into 5.2. That's all still still coming, uh, coming up. Next slide, please. So major points for 5.0.4. Again, as I mentioned, uh, installation focus changes. So we're going to have uh, a number of enhancements that will make installing the operating system uh, easier for, particularly for hardware that is slightly, I won't I we use the term non-standard. It may actually be more standard today, but unexpected for OS2 and unexpected for MemDisk, which is the uh, component that allows us to boot from DVD or from USB, uh, USB stick or uh, partition, what we call alt boot. We now have the first update to that component since 2011 that deals with memory configurations where the memory holes are in different places than we would otherwise expect. So we were running out of available memory for the installer. And on those systems, we simply couldn't get the operating system to install. Now that doesn't mean that you couldn't install the operating system on something else and then copy the, the installation over to that particular machine. But that gets to be rather tedious uh, and difficult to, uh, to get accomplished along the lines of a normal installation. 5.0.4 should be able to handle those situations much better. Um, it's going to be, it will, have, it will debut, sorry, pardon me, uh, the updater facility. So you will no longer have to reformat and reinstall all of your software to get the, the latest version of Arca OS installed in the system. If you have Arca OS 5.0 through 5.0.3, you can just boot from the installation medium and select update, select the partition that you want to update, and the updater will do the rest and apply the latest code fixes to what you have. It works really well. We've tested it quite thoroughly. We're confident that it's ready to go. Uh, so that will be coming out in 5.0.4. And of course, the usual batch of fixes to uh, included uh, third-party applications uh, and a Samba client update is in there as well. And the latest version of 
Arkanoid package manager. Next slide, please. So here's the deal with 5.0.5. Because 5.1 is going to take significant time, and when I say 9 to 12 months, um, that's a very rough estimate because, in truth, the only part of 5.1 that's really been started uh, has been the, the localization part of 5.1. None of the other features uh, have really been um, kicked into gear. So that's a very rough guesstimate as to how long 5.1 is going to take. It's clear that there will be some updates and features that will be ready to go before 5.1 is ready for release. So instead of holding those off until 5.1 or making them all available as individual uh, updates to be installed, we will consider doing a 5.0.5 release as the final release of the 5.0 cycle. Um, expect that release in six to nine months following the release of 5.0.4. 5.0.4 has uh, taken a little bit longer to get out than we had originally hoped. Uh, so if we can get 5.0.5 out sooner than the interval between 5.0.3 and 5.0.4, that would be a good thing. Next slide. In the 5.0.5 release, we would have more uh, enhancements to the, uh, the installer and to the preboot uh, area, including the, the ability to select USB 3 controller and number of, um, number of ports. We would have drivers for USB 3, potentially UEFI, um, and potentially NVMe. Of those three, only USB 3 actually exists today in, uh, in a state where it, it could be considered for inclusion in a release. So UEFI is in the research phase and you're gonna get a demo of, of how that boots later on. Uh, that hasn't been integrated with, with any of the ARCA OS uh, components yet. And, and the NVMe driver uh, has not even been, been started yet. But it is conceivable that somewhere along the line, if it were ready, we would include that in the 505 release. The same thing for multi-Mac um, Wi-Fi drivers. If available, we would consider those for inclusion in a 5.0.5 release. DT Audio, which uh, has been to, to this point known as DTA, Digital Transfer Agent, is the component which allows sound in WinOS 2 uh, and now DOS sessions to map to MuniAud for output. Um, because 5.1 is going to have retro gaming as a major focus, we've got a, we've got a, um, a resurgence in interest in getting WinOS 2 and DOS VDMs running the way they should under Arca OS, including full audio support. So, that component is coming along quite nicely. Uh, if it's ready for inclusion before 5.1 is ready for release, that would be something that we would consider putting into a 505 release. Because German and Spanish are so much farther along the translation uh, schedule than other languages that we have uh, in the works. We may consider 
releasing them as as 505 uh, versions, we're we're not quite sure yet. It depends again upon how far along those languages um, are at the at the time that we're ready for a 505 release. Again, we wouldn't hold up 505 for a German release, but if German is ready to go, then there's no sense in making it wait for 5.1. We know that there's demand for that, and we want to bring it out as soon as it's ready. And of course, we would include updated Mozilla apps, uh, bundled utilities, uh, and we have some new games that we're going to be adding. If Qt5 is ready uh, to go, and or, uh, or I should say and or, but if Qt5 is ready to go, and if the, the new Qt5 based browser is ready to go, we would consider adding that into a 505 release. And that's the general logic behind the 505 release. Whatever's ready to go at that point, six to nine months after 504, um, assuming we tested it rather well at that point, we would uh, do a 505 release. Next slide, please. Here's the plan for 5.1. As I said before, 5.1 is going to take a significant amount of time, probably up to a year, potentially more than a year. Um, Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Everything I'm about to tell you is estimates. Uh, it's a hope. It's a prayer. Um, it's a wish list item. Please do not hold us to any of these things. This list is entirely subject to change without notice. But these are the things that are on our list for 5.1. Next slide. 5.1 should be able to upgrade 5.0.anything to 5.1. There's a difference between an update and an upgrade. Because we will be adding features in 5.1, we're not just updating installed features to the latest code, code level. We're adding new features to an installed system. That's an upgrade. The update facility, except with, with rare exceptions, it's an interesting term of phrase, um, does not add new software to an existing 5.0 installation. There are, as I say, there are exceptions. Uh, for instance, uh, in 5.0.4, the update will add the, um, the ISO drive uh, component, which is what we use for, for the, the alt boot setup to, to boot from, from USB stick. Uh, that will be added to a 5.0 release where it was not present before. Um, we now include um, the two gigabyte fix for DOS VDMs as a TSR, a DOS TSR, that will be added to an existing 5.0 release. But other than that, most of the things in an update are just that, updates to what's already installed. Upgrade is a different story. So don't confuse update with upgrade. 5.1 should include an upgrade facility so that one does not have to reformat and reinstall ARCA OS 5.1 when there's an existing 5.0.4 or 5.0.5 installation on the disk. We want to include a migration facility. So if you've been holding off switching to ARCA OS because you have a ton of things installed under ECS uh, 2.1 or 2.2, the migration facility should be able to take that and convert it to the, the, the file system layout for ARCA OS 
and migrate your desktop to an Arca OS desktop, keeping all of your installed software intact. That's a pretty tall order unto itself. So when you add update and upgrade, uh, sorry, when you add upgrade and migrate to national language versions, just those things take a tremendous amount of time and effort. We're going to revamp the uh, the hardware types in the in the installer. Uh, right now, we have older hardware, modern hardware, uh, and we have uh, virtual machines. And some of the modern hardware, modern hardware safe mode, uh, which essentially just disables um, ACPI, does a couple other things. We're going to revamp those so that they're more logical and uh, they're easier to uh, select uh, for users who may not know exactly which one uh, to take. So that's that's part of our uh, preboot enhancement uh, plan. There will be some additional installer tweaks. Um, we have some things now that help us deal with um, with dirty volumes, or I should say volumes that appear to be in need of consistency checking. They may or may not be dirty. Dirty is a state of shutdown, not a state of volume. Um, so we'll, we'll be able to deal with those more efficiently than we do right now. And we want to make some changes to the locale subsystem in the operating system uh, to bring it into the 21st century and so that it's maintainable going forward. Um, locales are, are interesting, uh, interesting creatures, uh, concepts, um, and they... Um, it doesn't appear that anyone outside of IBM has ever attempted to update that, that uh, portion of the operating system. But uh, if you've ever used the, loca the country palette, um, you'll know what I'm talking about when, you, when, when I say that it needs to be brought into the 21st century. There are a number of things that are different now than when IBM originally designed the, the facility. But all of that is going to probably need to be redone from scratch and dropped in as a replacement. Uh, there is no, nothing in the, in the DDK that would, would give us any assistance with, uh, with that work. There's no, no way to rebuild components that are there, so they'll need to be replaced. They'll need to be built from scratch. Next slide, please. As you've probably heard over the years, David is working on a new audio driver that will replace uh, UniAud for us. Um, it will be more maintainable and more compatible with modern, uh, more modern uh, audio chips than UniAud. We won't have the UniAud resync problem. Um, hopefully that's going to get into 5.1. And the DT audio component will be able to talk to that as well as talking to UniR. It would be nice if we can get HD uh, video, Intel HD video support in SNAP um, for modern Intel um, chipsets. That's uh, one of the things on our list. That will give us accelerated video for those chips, as well as control for uh, output port and multi-head and zoom, um, the nice creature features that we don't, uh, creature comforts that we don't really get with, uh, with Panorama. Um, the IBM FTP application is really showing its age. Uh, if you don't use a replacement FTP program, dealing with IBM's command line FTP is very tedious these days. Um, 
we've got a recent thread going on the, uh, the ECS ISP mailing list about the need for an FTP client that does uh, TLS, uh, transport layer security with, with certificates. Well, the IBM FTP client doesn't do that. We're looking at a drop-in replacement that will be essentially uh, command compatible, so the learning curve will not be steep, but we can use it as a replacement FTP application. The one that we're looking at right now is LFTP, which is very common uh, in, on the, uh, in the Linux world. Um, and Paul Smedley is doing some work to get that uh, ported for us. Um, that's coming along. So we would, we'd want to do a drop-in replacement for FTP in 5.1. Um, most people are familiar at this point with the old IBM uh, work for selective install utility, or what we call the bane of our existence. That's going to go in 5.1, uh, and it will be replaced with a group of focused selective installers and configuration applets. Um, those are in in progress now. They're not they're not ready for release yet, but they're planning to go into 5.1. Credentials Manager, uh, which does exist, will be uh, upgraded and enhanced uh, and included in 5.1. Credentials Manager is essentially um, was created as a um, a Kerberos ticket um, GUI. But it should be able to be used for a number of other credentials as well, uh, as a not as a necessarily a secure password keeper, but a secure login keeper for uh, Kerberos and NTLM v2 and NTLM v1. We want to bring the Samba server up to the same code base as the Samba client, so Samba 4 based server. Uh, so that the Samba experience will be more unified. Right now, we have two entirely different Samba versions for Samba server and Samba client. So we want to bring those um, to a more unified experience. So we're using one configuration file that will properly handle both the client and the server. And the command structure would be uh, the same for both. And we want to rewrite ARCAMapper uh, completely. There are a number of shortcomings with the current ARCAMapper, and um, we really would like to, to redo that. That's going to take some time. That project has not even been started. Uh, it hasn't even been mapped out yet. Next slide, please. Printer Manager, uh, we like to rewrite um, into something more uh, comprehensive, I guess would be the word uh, to use. Right now we have a number of different printer uh, configuration utilities that sort of coexist in the, in the printers folder. Um, some of them call other ones um, as external applications. Um, but a unified printer manager would be really nice to have. Um, there are some other desktop things. Among them, a replacement for the background page on the, uh, the, the desktop uh, properties notebook. Uh, there, there's a tremendous amount of stuff that's wrong with that page. Um, the, the duplicate file name issue in the, in the drop-down list, the fact that it only allows selection of bitmap files, um, the fact that you can't browse with it, you need to sort of just type away um, and make sure you don't mistype something when you're looking for a 
a background image. It has no way to uh, automatically rotate wallpaper to uh, a different one from one um, from one uh, boot session to the next. So we'd like to see if we can address that by subclassing that page. Um, there are probably some other things, uh, well, not probably, there are definitely some other things that we would like to do to modernize um, some of the features of the, the, the workplace shell that have um, gone a little stale over the years. A desktop search utility. And here's the interesting thing about desktop search. When desktop search was first uh, proposed, announced for any platform, it seemed to me like a bit of a waste of time. Um, but, you know, as disks have become larger and our files have become more um, scattered, shall we say, Sometimes finding a file that you want, um, particularly a word processing file, an open office file, uh, or a, a PDF, and searching for a particular string has become tedious. There is a wonderful application called Recall. Um, Yuri did the, the first board of this some time ago with a, uh, a desktop folder for the search results. And it's, um, it's an extensible framework, so you can add support for other file types to it. This would be a good desktop search platform for us going forward. And we would like to include that or something like it in the, in the 5.1 release. Next slide, please. Is there a next slide? That's it. Okay. Um, so that's that's kind of where we, we leave off with, with 5.1. 5.2 is probably going to have whatever is deferred from 5. Well, 5.1.1 will have a, a probably a few of the things that are deferred from 5.1.0. Um, and some of the major things would probably go into 5.2. But right now we're targeting 5.1 for the major enhancements that we have on our list. We'll see how many actually make it into 5.1 uh, and how many we need to defer at that point. But that's the overall plan from here. Um, we hope to get 5.0.4 out the door before the end of this month. We are that close. Uh, we'll see how close we, we are to that, that estimate. But um, we're, we're, ready to, we're just about ready to do our final beta for that. Um, and that will, as I say, be an update to any installed um, Arca OS 5 um, simply by booting from the installation medium and selecting update. And that's it. So do we have any questions? Apparently there are no questions. Well, that's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone, en enjoy the rest of the conference. I'm sorry I couldn't be there this year. Um, I'm, I am watching the live stream, and I'm with everyone in spirit. All right. Thanks.